I'd like to say at this point, we're all largely in agreement that Resident Evil is the universal video game equivalent to a B-movie. Time and time again throughout this franchise's long-winded history, we've all noticed the schlocky charm of campy, over-the-top villains, boulder-punching heroes, elaborate mutant creatures, and contrived puzzle setups that all come back to this very moment. Jill, here's a lockpick. It might be handy if you, the master of unlocking, take it with you. The original Resident Evil could not have been in a better position to pivot survival horror to a new extremity, while at the same time indirectly establishing its own eccentric personality that far too often is seen by many as problematic, when in fact I actually think it makes it more unique and memorable than a lot of its contemporaries. 2017's Resident Evil 7 was seen by most as a return to form for the series following a string of sequels that forced an action-oriented approach that nobody asked for. I think for all the praise given to its grim, claustrophobic atmosphere, eerie new enemies and unsettling imagery, what it captured so inquisitively well was the 60s, 70s pulp-like nature of its horror style, indicative of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And yeah, sure, I could do a whole discussion on this reboot, but the Resident Evil 2 remake, on the other hand, took that pulpy quality and perfectly exemplified Resident Evil's borderline absurdity through an engaging, self-contained story. <laughs> You see, I initially had a problem with the remake, in that it relied very dependently on nostalgia to gauge emotional reactions, and so for outsiders to the franchise, it could be seen as quite an alienating experience because without any prior knowledge of the story, it's practically difficult to comprehend or justify any of the ridiculously crazy shit that happens. Except, upon my second playthrough, playing it without context or understanding of the prior story made it a much more compelling journey. Let me explain. The basic plot structure of Resident Evil 2 works like this. A city has gone dark to the rest of the world, and two different characters, upon venturing into the city with differing purposes, discover it's been overrun by zombies. Within five minutes of meeting each other, they have an immediate rapport, and individually make their way to a police station, and figure out how to access a bizarrely constructed escape route that eventually leads to a secure underground research facility that started the whole outbreak, where they manage to breach through the entire building security system, defeat some fiercely horrifying mutants, and make it out safely. Going just purely on the small fragments of information that the remake gave you, on paper it's actually quite a remarkable series of events that occur over the course of one night for two random everyday people, and even when not accounting for all the other mayhem that happens, it still convinces you that, yeah sure, this all makes sense. I'm obviously not saying it's a difficult story to follow, it does explain itself, whether it be through cryptic implications or dialogue and visual exposition, but stick with me here. What makes it so appealing to play for me is how, for all its serious elements that are very committed and effective efforts to be scary and sincere, it still remembers not to treat everything with the same stern, grounded, gritty realism. I've covered enough morbidly depressing horror stories that sometimes I want to experience that uh, paradoxical horror, shall we say, where it's able to put a smile on my face amidst all the despair and suffering. It's a suspension of disbelief where you are so acutely aware of its fantastical exaggeration that you're sold on this wild, exciting journey and you don't ultimately question it. It calls back to Sam Raimi's philosophy on horror when making Evil Dead, where he argues that for all the shock and terror, horror fundamentally has to be rooted in the same joy of experiencing storytelling like in any other medium. What I mean by this is that playing Resident Evil 2 is both genuinely tense and scary, like anyone can point out, but it's just as equally comedically sensitive and, well, willfully goofy in its 70s to 90s origins. Hell, even Leon makes reference to how oddly dumb the entire situation is when he encounters a red herring in the form of a giant aggressive alligator thing before unceremoniously blowing its fucking head off. Ugh. 
Chew on that, you overgrown son of a bitch. For every moment I'm greatly on edge, I appreciate when the game acknowledges and embraces the oddity of its roots. Take my rather, uh, controversial feelings towards Mr. X for example. I find his costumed appearance within the context of the atmosphere to be kinda humorously melodramatic, until it somewhat becomes normalized by the more obtrusive appearance of William Burkham and the sewer creatures, but regardless he still exudes a powerfully dangerous and unnerving presence. His attempt to blend in with humans is both deliberately jarring and uncanny, where in your first abrupt encounter with him, you just stop to gaze in perplexity for a minute and forget he's plainly there to kick your arse. Knowing nothing about who he is or where he came from keeps this alluring mystique to him, as the hunt becomes characterised by your inability to completely validate his purpose. The less you know about anything, the better, and as a result, I find myself bluntly accepting the tried and true formula off, uh, sure, why not? When you start to figure out all the context, it begins to grind the game in a way that diminishes the tension of the world's offbeat unpredictability. Granted, I find Mr. X easy to exploit by simply hiding in a safe room and waiting for him to go away, bar the few times he just waited patiently outside like a smartass, but when you're balancing this memefied caricature with the relentlessly challenging zombie encounters, it maintains the necessary dread so you don't get complacent, just because you find it funny that you're being chased by what is effectively an overglorified children's action figure. By the way, I know there's probably many comments below saying that I'm just sitting here shitting on Mr. X by saying he's this silly, abstract encounter that I couldn't help but find partially humorous, but I am also very aware that there are many people that have the absolute polar opposite effect where he's practically off-putting, and that is the exact same feeling I had towards zombies. The thing is, when it comes to fiction, I've never really found zombies to be all that scary, but the remake's crowning design feature to me is how vicious and seemingly unstoppable zombies are. You can never guarantee a kill in any capacity. Anyone that find it frustrating that you put almost a dozen bullets into a zombie's head and it still keeps getting back up, know that's clearly the point. It plays on our associations and expectations of the genre where we think by destroying the brain that it should kill the zombie for good. I'm sure many of you feel the same way I do when questioning how it's possible in fiction for zombies to overthrow the military when they're slow, shuffling idiots. But the way zombies are presented here makes their threat irrefutable. It's overwhelming how under par I felt despite having a fucking shotgun of all things. It's a balance of power I haven't seen so maturely implemented since The Last of Us. Sometimes you have to be thoughtful about when it's best to attack and when it's better to flee. And for me at least, until I had enough bullets that I didn't have to be so conservative, I just used my guns to stun and run. Going back to the story, when I was basically talking about how ignorance is bliss to anyone walking into the game blind, it also manifests itself within each character's journey. Leon is presented as this idealistic, ambitious hero wanting to do what's right, but there's a naivety to his story arc he overcomes by the end. He's led by Ada to assume Annette is this delusional mad scientist, prompting us to treat her as the real villain of the story. When we see the same events from Claire's perspective, however, there's a layered sympathy given to the conflict. Claire realises that Annette was just doing her job as everything fell apart, including her family life. And while she is still situationally evil, we see a side to her that Leon has no knowledge of. Instead, he defines his perception based purely on Robert's repurposed characterization into a man desperate to protect his daughter amidst a virus that has destroyed innocent lives. In a way, it neutralises our understanding of events. This even includes getting a brief encounter with Marvin pre-zombification, making Leon's encounter feel all the more tragic. While these subversions aren't especially frequent enough to add anything truly profound to the narrative, I think most of us would have liked to see Claire and Leon interact a bit more, it at least, depending on whose side you experience first, makes your reading of the characters and events feel a little more complex. It took a while for the Resident Evil 2 remake to grow on me, 
At first, I went in treating it as this traditional mainstream horror game, when really it feels more like this figurative bad dream that escalates in unexpected and surreal ways. With the lack of a world outside the intimate confines of the character's ordeal, there's a questionable obscurity to how real this all is, akin to the disconnected scenarios common in B-movies. I understand there is a world outside Raccoon City, but the time we spend in it is devoid of life and surrounded in hollow darkness. It's a literal apocalypse, isolated from the rest of the world in a way that's similar to Silent Hill in some respects. There's no real find sense of time or place. It's that dystopian B-movie world where it doesn't equate to our own real-world understanding. It survives in its own fantasy set to its own rules and logic. A logic that can be perceived as genuinely horrifying, oddly baffling, or just straight up comedically deranged. In my time playing Resident Evil 2, while there was a constant intensity to navigating environments, the story treads on a welcome innocence to its campy pulp identity. It manages to sustain fear, but isn't afraid to dabble in the absurd and sensational. It's fun because it isn't trying to be inherently bleak. There is a true light at the end of the tunnel, back into a world where the only real evil is what humans are capable of being. Seriously, what a dickhead. Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching. Uh, as you can tell, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this franchise, but it's always great to play it for its schlocky charm at times, so let me know in the comments below what you think is the best and worst Resident Evil game, and just what your thoughts are of the series in general. Um, and if you enjoyed this uh, episode and you want to support the show, you can do so by heading over to Patreon, where for just a few dollars a month, you can get your name in the credits, you can get early access, and you can even vote on what the next video could be and there's also an exclusive discord chat where you can tell me what you've been watching what you've been playing what you've been reading or just talk about any sort of nonsense over there as well uh, so please do consider uh, checking that out and also follow me over on twitter and instagram i'm on those platforms as well and until next time stay safe and i'll see you all very soon bye